Hey friends, it's Liz the official craft nerd and I have got three high-end shabby chic DIYs for you today. So let's get started. So for my first one, I am taking some of these little boxes from Dollar Tree and in my vision of this, I wanted a little tiny like vintage um like just little drawer set I guess and so what I'm taking here are just some trimmed down pieces of some painter sticks uh, that I'm making the base out of as well as the top part of my little um, I guess cabinet that I'm creating uh, basically I'm using hot glue for this whole project but of course you know if you do want to keep it a um, little bit longer keep it sturdy you can definitely use some wood glue on there However, I feel like this is just going to be decoration, so the hot glue will do just fine. So I want to take a minute to talk about our sponsor for this video. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to Plaid. You guys sent me all of this amazing, amazing stuff that I was so excited to dive into. And you guys, you all use Plaid products, I'm sure, from Waverly to Folkar to Apple Barrel and all of these other wonderful goodies, especially Mod Podge. That's all Plaid, you guys. And they come out with some amazing products that I was so, so excited to use. So I am going to be using plenty of them throughout this video. So I decided to go with the Palmento color uh, with the cream coat paint that I was sent from Plaid. And this color is beautiful, you guys. I absolutely loved this green. It just definitely goes for that vintage vibe that I'm feeling on this project. And it just painted on there like a dream. And you know I got to do a shameless plug for myself here guys. So if you like what you see, please hit that like button below and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you don't already and hit that notification bell as well so you can get notified every time I upload new content. And of course, follow me on Instagram. I'd love for you to say hi to me there. I am on as official craft nerd. So check me out. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So enough of that. Back to the project. Um, I am basically just, as you can see, giving this whole entire uh, shelf, drawer set, whatever you want to call it. You know I struggle with the words, you guys. So, <laughs> But I'm giving the whole thing a coat of this green paint. And honestly, one coat was all it took. And you guys know how a lot of times these Dollar Tree wood pieces soak up a lot of the acrylic paints. But with this particular paint, one coat was the only thing I needed. So definitely, definitely happy about that. So once that was painted, now the fun part began. I am taking some of this uh, scrapbook paper that I already had on hand. Uh, it is kind of a slightly thick cardstock, not a not a very thick cardstock, but it was a cardstock nonetheless. And I'm just basically making some squares to sort of fit the front end of these drawers. However, I am wanting them distressed and looking beat up. So what I do is I wet the sides all the way around and then I just start tearing it and I want pieces of the white to show through. I want it to be ripped up and mangled looking because again, my style in my projects, I definitely love them to look older, to look worn and used and grungy and dirty. So with this particular um, method that I'm gonna do is just Mod Podge. I mean, you guys know how to, or not Mod Podge guys, decoupage. Come on, come on, girl. Anyway, 
all I'm doing after I've distressed my little pieces is I'm going to put a layer of the Mod Podge down and I'm going to smooth it out with this little handy dandy bubble smoother thingy. <laughs> Whatever that's called, you guys. <laughs> I know it has a name, but um, anyway. I just smooth it out and then I'm going to give it another coat of that Mod Podge. Now I am using the matte, but Plaid has a few different varieties of their Mod Podge. They have the satin, uh, they also have a gloss, and then of course they have a dishwasher safe, which is exciting because I will definitely use that for some other projects. Uh, but you see how this is, it's real simple. You're gluing them on, you're smoothing it out, you're slapping some more glue on. It is definitely super easy to do and really there's no way to make a mistake on this because like I said, I love it to be grungy and beat up and, you know, looking old and worn. So even if it rips, even if it tears, it's still cool because it's going to work out for the vibe that I'm going for. So I'm also going to put a piece up on the top of this, as you can see, grunged it up and simple as that. Now you can do however you want to do it. You can do flowers. You can do this type of pattern. You can do any kind of um, you know, just any kind of design whatsoever. I mean, the fun thing about this is you can use tissue paper, you can use collage paper, you can use cardstock or just regular scrapbook paper. It's endless, like the possibilities of how you want to do this. So make it your own if you want to recreate this. Do however you like. As long as you're happy with it in the end, that's really all that matters, you guys. So obviously here I'm just kind of dirtying up with my antique wax. Some of these have beads that I got off Amazon. I can put the link down in my description box below uh, because uh, another shameless plug, I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you guys are interested in any of the products that I use here, you can check them out in the links that I will drop in the description box down below. So of course, you guys know this would not be a video of mine unless I am gritting this stuff up with some of that antique wax and that is exactly what I'm doing here. When I tell you that after just kind of putting the edges on like I normally do and then going across the paper and wiping it down, how beautiful that looks. I mean, I don't know if the video can really give it the justice that it deserves because in real life it is so beautiful and it just looks so antique and vintage and I mean I'm in love with this piece and I really hope you guys like it so definitely gonna have to tell me what you guys think about it down in the comments below uh, but yeah all I'm doing here is just slapping that stuff on wiping it off if you don't do a lot of distressing and you're scared to do it please don't be scared to do it there I'm telling you it is the easiest thing the funnest thing and honestly the outcome always looks so good. So just give it a shot, you guys. You're going to love it. And that honestly is all there was to this project. So placing my drawers back in and this is what the final outcome was. I again am obsessed with this. I love these colors together. I love how old and used it is to me. I mean, it's just beautiful. So again, I hope you like this one.
So this is a super quick, super easy, and definitely a high-end looking piece of decor that you can do. Now, I had these wood rounds from Christmas. You guys can find them. I know Arteza sells these in big packs, um, but you can get them probably at Hobby Lobby, Target, um, Michaels, wherever. And I have this collage paper, which I absolutely love. It is by Tim Holtz, and it is just exactly what I was looking for. Because again, I wanted to kind of keep with that old feeling, and these birds just were perfect. So I, again, am using my wonderful Mod Podge in matte, and I'm going to just put a thin coat down on top of this wood, and then I'm going to place my piece, you know, of my bird right on top. I'm going to smooth it out with this one. I can just use my finger, but you know, I still like to use that little tool, um, that they provide because it definitely does help with kind of getting out any bubbles. And I know some projects, you know, you're not going to want any kind of bubbles when you're doing your decoupage for these particular things that I'm doing. If it wrinkles a little bit, if it tears a little bit, if it bubbles even a little bit, which normally it won't because I'll still spread it out. It's okay because those wrinkles, those creases, those marks, those little details like that add to the vintage look. And I love them, especially when I distress them. So all I'm doing for the second one is the same thing. I just took a different set of birds out and I'm going to just glue them on down. The cool thing about this is this is a year round type of decor piece you could do all kinds of things with these little wood slices. And I wish I had larger ones because I definitely have some ideas for some larger wood slices. Um, but for right now, I just thought these would be super cute to use. You can put them on tear trays. Uh, you could, you know, make them into Christmas decorations if you wish. Um, but I just, you know, I'm not thinking that far ahead yet. <laughs> I just wanted something to go with what I was making right now and I just thought these are just gorgeous so I'd love to hear what you guys think about something simple like this because again I want my projects to definitely be something that anybody can try um and and make it easy enough for you guys to do you know it's <sighs> it's something therapeutic about decoupaging and it's funny because I used to struggle with it. And then once I let go of things needing to be perfect all the time, that's when it started to work. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe if you guys have ever, you know, felt like that about some things, you know, when you're crafting or whatnot, that's just kind of how it was with me. I just learned to let it go. And then all of a sudden there it was. So I just finished these up with a quick hit with my uh, sanding block there just to kind of get those edges off. That is the simplest and cleanest way to get your edges off of things this way um, instead of using scissors or anything like that. It just melts the paper like right off the edges. It's, it's amazing. And once I have all of that done and cleaned up, I am going to go ahead and hit it with my antique wax, y'all. You know I love this stuff, but again, keeping with the vibe of my projects for this video, I wanted these to look a little bit older and used, and it just, I love how these turned out. They were so stinking cute. Like, I don't know, you guys. Again, Tell me what you think. Tell me what, what kind of things you guys would make with these if you had the chance. So I'd love to hear it. Okay, and my final project for the video, I am using 10 of these paint stir sticks as well as a couple of these large jumbo popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart and I believe these paint stir sticks I picked up from Amazon a long time ago I've had so many of them that it was like time to use these so I basically just push them all together line them up and then I'm using my popsicle sticks just as a brace on the back to keep these all together
So using my favorite Waverly chalk paint in plaster, I am going to go ahead and give my uh, sign a coat. And again, with this, I'm only doing one coat on this uh, because I plan to do some decoupaging over top of it and distressing. So there's no need to waste a lot of paint by giving it multiple layers. I definitely like the more faded look, especially when you're aiming towards a more vintage, worn type of piece. So I'm just going to hit this with my heat gun because I am as impatient as all get out, y'all. So I don't like to wait for paint to dry. <laughs> uh, and then once I do get it dried up, I'm just going to rough up the edges a little bit with my sanding block. And then I'm going to go ahead and use a cutout from some more of my Tim Holtz collage paper. Uh, I can definitely find this paper for you and link it down below. Um, it is just, it's a beautiful paper and it's very vintage looking and I just, I absolutely love Tim Holtz products. If you've never seen any of his things before, he is just, oh, he's a genius. But anyway, once I cut out this, um, piece that I really, really liked on that paper, um, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down with the Mod Podge and I'm smoothing it out with my little tool. Um, it, is, and I love this tool because it didn't make it rip. Um, if you know sometimes using thin tissue paper, if you put too much pressure on it, it will pull and it will rip it. And it did not do that to this. So I loved it. Um, and now basically I'm taking some other um, collage paper that I had uh, of Tim Holtz as well. This is just more of a floral uh, pattern. And I'm just cutting out bits and pieces to kind of go around my sign. And there's really no rhyme or reason to it. You just do how you like it, what you think looks good. I'm not concerned if it looks authentic uh, or anything like that. I just truthfully think that if it looks beautiful to me and I know that I'm gonna hang it up in my own home, that is all that matters. So I absolutely love getting creative with these things and just putting things on there until I can say it's it's done you know and sometimes I go a little too far and sometimes I don't do enough but in this case I feel like all that I added to it definitely worked for its benefit Once I've completely covered all of those pieces with the final layer of Mod Podge, again, I'm going to take my sanding block and just clean off those edges. It is super easy to do and just as long as you're sanding it away from the paper, that tissue paper literally just melts right off the side and it makes the cleanest uh, cut that you could get and it's way better than trying to trim it down with scissors, I promise you. Um, I just, and it's actually really therapeutic. <laughs> like I love doing it. I just love seeing it melt away. So I think that's why I left so much of this in the video so you guys could see it. It's just, to me, I absolutely love that part of, of the cleanup process. Uh, but no, here we go, guys. This is the best part. I feel this was so satisfying to me. I love, 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 love. I can't say it enough. How this antique wax did what it did to this sign. It just brought out every every little detail that needed to come out and it aged it beautifully. And again, there is no rhyme or reason to this. I just greatly uh, kind of just 
wipe it all over the place and then just clean it off with a paper towel. And I usually start from the outside edges in when I'm dragging my brush. And then on the inside, I'm just kind of lightly grazing it like a dry brush across the whole thing. And I do a little bit here and a little bit there and then wipe it off. And you guys, I just, I would say I'm speech, <laughs> speechless, but I've literally talked this whole video. So I can't really say that, but you get what I mean. So I'm finishing off the sign with just wrapping some twine around the top end and gluing it towards the back. And then I just made a real quick uh, finger bow that I am going to glue on the front. Now I have been asked if I can make a video on how to make bows and that is in the works. I Like I've said before, I'm not necessarily the greatest bow maker. I'm just doing what works for me and I've learned off plenty of other fantastic crafters and creators on YouTube on how to do these bows. So, um, but I'm definitely going to try for you guys. I re really, 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 really <laughs> want to try, uh, to put out a good bow video for you. So stay tuned for that. But I'm finishing this sign off with just a simple little twine, uh, loop on the back and that's it you guys. So you guys, I feel like this is definitely one of my favorite, favorite pieces that I've ever made my favorite sign I just honestly cannot stop staring at this I love this sign and all three of these pieces they're all just me this is my style this is what I love these are things that I will put up in my own home so I really hope y'all enjoy this and you know for all of my old subscribers and new subscribers I appreciate you all so much and I love that you like what I do. And I just want you to say hi to me down below. And until next time, you guys, stay safe.